It's mesmerizing, you know, you can just do and you can just circle it around like this and it goes around like that and then, you know, oh. oh man, I, I, I. Hi everybody, welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. I'm your host, Thomas McNulty, and today we're talking about scary books again. All right, let, let me lend you a severed hand when it comes to scary books, all right? No, bad joke, I know. Let's start out with two contemporary authors, Richard Lehman's The Beast House and Dan Simmons, Summer of Night. Richard Lehman is no longer with us, I'm sorry to report, but Dan Simmons is out there. I think both authors remain in, remain, remain in print, and Dan Simmons, of course, is still out there producing great work. So, good beach reading, good thrillers, good spooky stuff right there with some contemporary authors. I'd like to get that in. I don't want everything in this video series to be retro. Um, that brings us to Norman Partridge, Dark Harvest. Norman Partridge. I think a lot of you are familiar with Norman Partridge already. My only problem with Norman Partridge is that he doesn't have a book come out every month because I really like Norman Partridge, okay? And just fantastic. Dark Harvest, highly recommended. Check out Dark Harvest. Now let's have three from England. Minstrel's Bargain, the Prophecy Trilogy, book one by Richard Eyre. And I met Richard at... Uh, the home of Guy Newman Smith, Guy N. Smith last year, and a fine writer, great book. This is the first in a trilogy, as it says on the cover. I really enjoyed this, kind of a rock and roll thing, you know. Um, so check out Richard's books. And then Andy Remick, the Clockwork Vampire Chronicles, uh, Angry Robot Books, put out this compilation of his vampire novels. Great spooky reading. You can't go wrong with this stuff. Really fun. Um, so... You know, Andy Remick uh, follows in the footsteps of David Gemmell, uh, the great, the late, great David Gemmell. We'll get to him in a different episode. So for spooky, scary books, The Clockwork Vampire Chronicles. Look at that. That's really spooky. And I love this thick edition. All right, another, another fine, fine writer, David Owen Hughes, Brain Damaged from England. I also met David Owen Hughes at the home of Guy Smith last year. Fantastic. This is a collection of stories. Splatterpunk style, good gut-wrenching material. Excellent all the way around. Brain Damage by David Owen Hughes. Get it. Nice man too, by the way. Richard Aaron and David Owen Hughes are two really nice men. Really fine people. Um, I want to give a nod to Tim Curran. Tim Curran is a contemporary author. I think he lives here in the Midwest. He did two weird westerns that I really like, Grim Riders and Skull Moon. And I believe these are still available. Check out Amazon for Tim Curran. All right, these are two excellent weird westerns. You cannot go wrong with this. I say that a lot because it's true. If you really like weird, spooky stuff, Tim Curran is your guy. Excellent material. I mean, this is the stuff that will give you nightmares, okay? And then Tim also did this book called Hive. I, I love this book. Now, this book follows in the footsteps of H.P. Lovecraft. I'll bet you've heard of him. And it's an... Look at the cover on this, by the way. I think this is still in print. It might have a different cover now. I'm not sure. Um, this is really an excellent book. Uh, you know, I mean, everything Tim Curran writes is good. So I want to give a nod to him in this video series for those of you that are looking for Halloween material because it's... Halloween somewhere, right? For some of you, it's year-round. And finally, something a little different. Ghosts in Irish Houses, a collection of ghostly folk tales by James Reynolds. Look at this. Now, that is a fun little collection of folk tales from Ireland. Um, I am descended from the Irish, the Scottish, the English, and the Welsh, by the way. Um, and, you know, naturally... You know, I, I can't resist anything that's connected to Ireland. So, Thomas Patrick McNulty. Um, my family comes from Donegal. So, there you go. Look at that. Now, this is... This severed hand showed up. I don't know what happened here. I, you know, I don't know what, how that did that. 
in the la- in the first episode relating to scary books, we talked about EC Comics. EC Comics are always worth tracking down from the 1950s. I consider this the gold standard of horror comics. And here's just these are reprints. You know, um, fun stuff to have. It, it's excellent reading. And then let's take a look at some of the stuff DC Comics did. DC Comics actually did some really good. Uh, spooky books back in the 70s so in the 60s and 70s so house of mystery was one of their series uh this is a neil adams cover this is a, a michael kaluta cover by the way uh for those of you know, that know these artists uh dc comics doesn't really get a lot of credit for this they're not doing anything right now close to this quality sadly i'm sorry to say and then they did unexpected what a great series look at this cover i love this one isn't that just gothic? I mean, you know, fun comic. You know, comic books are a great, a great way to teach young readers to read. You have the sequential art that tells the story in conjunction with a text that they can follow along and they can piece it together. Uh, you know, it, they're not simplified things. Comic books are fantastic learning tools, teaching tools. So House of Secrets and Secrets of the Haunted House, again... DC Comics during their heyday when they were putting out material that was worth buying and here you have some great material from the 70s uh, 70s and 80s Secrets of the Haunted House here's another great one I mean the covers alone make you want to read the comics and that gets young readers high school age interested then they did a series called Ghosts which I thought was particularly good I have quite I have a stack of these and I have quite a lot so fun material um I never get tired of telling you how fun reading is because you should be having fun with it. Ghosts by DC Comics. Now, these are anthologies, so there's like three stories per issue. And, you know, again, this is good teaching material, teaching narrative structure, as well as just entertaining yourself or entertaining younger readers. You know, you get these this excellent quality that was involved in these. And you can find these back issues on eBay um, and at comic book conventions and so forth. Comic shops might have them. The Witching Hour, look at this material. You know, if that doesn't make you feel like it's Halloween, I don't know what will. And DC Comics did it better than anyone. And then they did something they could never get away with today, Weird War. Man, nothing like this on the market today. You know, they um, DC Comics used to put out some really good war comics so did marvel uh weird war i mean they couldn't do this today if you you know they just don't know how to do it number one uh and the uh political climate sadly is uh, not not of uh the type that would condone this type of material uh it's considered too controversial and yet it it told us about the human experience you know ghost stories and tales of the war and when you combine them or even separate them you know these are tales that teach us about the nature of our existence, the nature of the world we live in. And so it's a learning tool as well. And, and it can also provide a, a level of entertainment because spooky tales are always fun. You know, so anytime that you feel that you need to entertain yourself with something spooky, check out some old comic books now and again, you know. Um, the stuff, the stuff is highly entertaining. The quality is generally good, you know, so... Anyways, there you go, and uh, we're done with this episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you can remember to do that. And as always, stay well, stay happy, feed your brain, and read a book.